similar to persistent footer buttons is the bottom navigation bar. It's also at the bottom, but it's a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and explain. First thing we need to do is crack open our state, do control O, and let's look for initial state. Let's add this in. And let's move it up here just for the sake of clarity. We're going to make a list. And we're going to make a list of bottom navigation bar items. I'm going to make a value. And let's make an index. All right, so initial state. This is something we really haven't seen before. Initial state is the, well, you guessed it, the initial state of the state class, meaning before anything's really rendered on the screen for the first time, what do we want to do with our state? And this is where we can actually, you know, set some state items, set some things exactly. Um, exactly how you want to do it is really up to personal preference. You don't even really need to set state. You can just set values of different variables. Think of it like a constructor not really constructor it's called immediately after the constructor all right so let's go ahead and let's say items equal new list and let's just add some items in here and we're going to add a new bottom navigation bar item and you see how it has an icon and a title. So we're going to say new icon, icons dot, and let's just add people. And then for the title, this is also a widget. New text, we're just going to say people. And through the magic of copy and paste here, we can just make a few items. Let's say weekend and message. All right, so we've got some items in there. Now what we need to do is actually create, you guessed it, our bottom navigation bar. First thing we're going to do here is set our value. Some people like to do it before the body. Some people like to do it after the body. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to do it after just for the sake of clarity. We're going to make a new bottom navigation bar. You see the only item it really needs is items. So we're going to give it the items. Save this, hot reload. And you can see here is our items. Now, when we click, nothing really seems to happen. It's because it's part of state. We have to actually set the state. So let's go ahead and do that. Set the fixed color. We'll say colors dot blue. And let's say current index. And we want the actual index. Now we're going to set our state on tap. This is because we have an array of items. In our, I shouldn't say array. We have a list of items. And in that list, there's zero index. So when we tap one of them, we want to set that index. We're going to say int item. And in here, we're going to set state. We're going to set the index and then we're going to set the value. Ah, uh, yes, here we go.
you're wondering why that didn't work the first time, it's actually pretty simple. Um, the double quotes allows us to embed. The single quote simply did not. Save this. Hot reload should take effect. And there we go. Voila. Now we have a fully functional bottom bar. This whole section deals with user notifications. The first one we're going to do is called a bottom sheet. And what it is, is it is kind of like the drawer that pops off, but it's from the bottom. It comes up here and you can put pretty much any controls you want in there. Typically it's for user notifications like yes, no, maybe that court, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and let's play around with this and see how it works here. First thing we need to do is let's make a function. Let's say show bottom. And in here we want to show model bottom sheet. There we go. If you don't know what that means, model is a term right there, that word model. Some people pronounce it modal. But anyways, it's a term that says that it's the only thing that can be active in the application. You've seen these before. Like if you have a text editor open, you go to close it, it'll pop open and say, hey, do you want to save this? Yes or no? So let's break this down a little bit here. And the context, this is where things get a little exciting. We need to modify this just a bit. This is templated, so we're gonna return void. Context is gonna be our current context. Now, builder, this is where things get nuts. The concept of a builder in Flutter is very simple, but also very complex. It means that you're not necessarily going to generate the code yourself. You're going to have code generate the code. To do this, we're going to say build context context. And in here, we've got our nice little function. So inside of the builder, this is what's going to happen. We're going to return some code. Here's our container, and we need to have our semicolon. In the container, of course, well, we have our padding. And let's just say 15.0, because that's a double. And we need a child. For the child, we want a new row. If you don't know what a row is, we're going to cover it in layouts, but it's very similar to a column except for it, of course, goes in a row, not a column. All right. We want our main axis alignment to be main axis alignment center. And we'll explain what that is here in just a second. And we want a list of children fighting with auto indentation here. Now, in the list of children, we want to say new text, and then we want some data. And let's actually set the style. And let's set this to red. And let's set that to bold. Now let's make a new raise button. I like raise buttons as opposed to flat buttons because it's pretty obvious what it is. It doesn't just look like highlighted text. And let's go ahead and let's pop the navigator on this. Initialize our hot reload. And down here, we need to add a new raise button.
And we're just simply going to call the show bottom function here. Let's pull up our emulator, and sure enough, we can click this and some info here and close. You can see how it actually grays out the application. So you can't really do anything with the app itself. Like you couldn't click on this button and show it again. But you can actually pop the navigator by hitting the back button on the phone itself.